Hello and welcome to DevTopperFest 2020, the Project Kima session. In this video, we're going to explain how to install Kima on a local Minikube instance for Mac and uh, Windows. So the first section, you will see the installment for Mac. In the second section, we will talk about the same thing for Windows. Before we start, make sure you have uh, Homebrew installed on your Mac machine because we're using that to install all the needed dependencies. So we get started here installing Minikube and that we can do with brew install Minikube. What it will do is it will fetch the Minikube formula, install it, install all its dependencies. And the good thing here is kubectl, so the Kubernetes CDLI that we need is going to be installed with it. Now that our installment of Minikube and Kubernetes CLI is done, we want to check the versioning. So we put in Minikube version and we see here it's the version 113, which is good. And then we can do the same thing for kubectl, kubectl version, which is 119.2, which is great too. Let's clear the screen and continue. Now with Minikube and Kubernetes CLI installed, we have all the basic components for a Kubernetes cluster handy. Um, we could fire up a Kubernetes cluster at this point on Minikube. But what we want to do first is, because we want to use Project Kima, we want to install the Kima CLI. And to do so, we are going to use Homebrew as well. To install the Kima CLI, we can just say brew install Kima CLI, hit return. And with that, we get the newest version of the Kima CLI, which is 1.15.1 in this case. Just to make sure everything is ready and good, we can say Kima version to get the specific version printed, which is Kima CLI version 115.1. So that's great. Let's clear our screen and continue. We have all components installed. We can go ahead and provision a Minikube instance with the Kima specific configuration. This is necessary for Kima to run properly on Minikube locally on your machine. If you haven't done it yet, please install Docker Desktop on your Mac because that's where you're going to use for containerization later on. And this is what, what also brings us HyperKit um, for virtualization on our Mac because we don't want to install HyperKit from scratch. With Homebrew, you could do that, but we're just using Docker Desktop here. Provision Minikube with the Kima configuration, we can just simply say Kima provision Minikube minus minus VM driver equals HyperKit and return. And then you just say yes. And it fires up a Minikube using this Kima provisioning configuration. With the success of that, we see happy minikubing. And um, with that, we can just say Kima install to install Kima locally on minikube. And then here you see it's installing all the components it needs, like the cluster essentials, testing, Istio, and uh, a lot more. This will take a little bit. So relax, lean back, have a coffee, and just wait for it to finish. Important to know here is if you have some sort of roaming clients or VPNs on your machine, please make sure uh, that incoming and outgoing uh, network connections are allowed. If not, just de deactivate them for the installing process. If you don't do that, you probably will face issues while fetching and installing these components. With the password prompt, enter your machine's password in order for Kima to add its root certificate to the keychain. After you've done that, you can see Kima got installed successfully with all the information you need. You got the Kima console address, the admin email, and the admin password to log into your Kima console. The Kima console itself is a web UI where you can operate on your Kima cluster install and deploy applications, expose APIs and services and, and so on, but we will go into detail at a later point. First, let's open the Kima console here. And um, for that, we just used the uh, credentials we got prompted in our command line, which is admin at kima.cx, put the password in and say login. Now that the Kima console is loaded, you can see all like the the overview which shows you the namespaces you can add news namespaces you can do administration you can export your uh, kubernetes config from there and do much more 
So if you go into the default namespace, you can see the total deployments and pods in that namespace, which are currently zero, of course, because we haven't deployed anything. Here you can see to get the kube config. And with that, you have Kima installed locally on Minikube on your Mac. And the next part is the Windows installment. Now we're coming to the Windows installment. So here we see the command line open, the bash. And uh, you want to make sure you have Chocolatey installed as a package manager to install the components for the local Kima installment. And um, with that, let's get started. First, we want to make sure we install the Kima CLI. And then we do with Choco install Kima CLI. Here we get the newest version. And that might take a second here. With Kima CLI in place, we can now start installing Minikube. So we say again, Choco install Minikube version, and then we define the version here we want, which is 1.12.2, and just hit return. Now with Minikube installed, we want to make sure we have the right version installed. So we just say Minikube version, and then we should see the 1.12.2 popping up right there. So this is all good in place and we can continue. Next, we want to provision Minikube with the Kima configuration. So we say Kima provision Minikube, then we define the VM driver, which is Hyper-V on Windows. And then we define that the Hyper-V virtualization switch um, is external. And we execute that. In case you have Minikube already installed and an existing Minikube cluster ready here, it will ask you if you want to delete or remove the existing Minikube cluster and you just say yes and then execute. If the provisioning process was successful, you will see this beautiful message, Happy Minikubing. Now with Minikube in place, we can say Kima install to install the actual Kima version here, which is 115. This might take a while, so lean back again and have a coffee. If Kima is installed correctly on mini QPC, happy Kima. The last step here is to take the IP address and add them to the host file. So here we see how the host file is open in Visual Studio Code. And um, we just go into our CLI and our bash and just copy the all everything you see on the left hand side here. And just paste it into your host file. Now make sure you save. It will ask you if you want to do this as an admin. You say yes. And the host file is edited and saved correctly. Now let's see if our Kima installment was perfectly fine and we can actually call the Kima console here. So this is the same process as on uh, macOS. You just go into your Kima console, which is console.kima.local. And then you log in with the uh, provided login data and credentials.
And with that, you have the Kima console open and you can start Kimaing. And with that, we want to close the exercise for today. What you've seen is how you would install a local Kima instance on macOS and do the same thing for Windows. And in the next exercises, we're going to show you how you're going to deploy an application to Kima and do far form work with it. Thank you for watching and see you next time.